Okay, in this lesson we're going to have a tutorial on using CMG to solve a very simple one-dimensional reservoir problem. So a uh, schematic of the problem is here. It's just a four grid block problem with a constant pressure boundary condition on the right, on the left rather, and a no-flow boundary condition on the right. And then here are the material properties uh, of the fluid and the rock, the, the compressibility and whatnot. Uh, this is a single phase water flow simulation. Okay, so uh, to get started, when you launch CMD, CMG, you'll, you'll be brought to this launcher window, which has uh, some files possibly uh, listed here and a bunch of applications, all right? So this is, uh, these are separate applications from within CMG, and the one we're going to launch first is going to be the builder window, okay? So when it launches, uh, we'll go ahead and, um, oh, and I guess, by the way, the, you know, I have a little bit older version of CMG. You, you may have the newest version, but uh, th it should be very similar. So don't worry too much about the numbers here, but rather just look for Builder and launch it. And then it'll be brought to a window like this, or possibly you'll be prompted already. Um, if you're not prompted, hit New to, to open up a, th this prompt. And from here, we're going we're gonna to choose the IMEX simulator. We're going to choose uh, working units, uh, uh, field units, with a single porosity model. Uh, the start date for this simulation doesn't matter, so you can just leave it the default value. Go ahead and hit OK a couple of times, which will be brought to here. And now we need to start building up our model. So <coughs> we basically need to input enough information so that all the red X's are removed from the side over here, <coughs> uh, of course, correctly for our single phase um, problem. So what, we're, what we want to do is we want to go to uh, Reservoir, uh, Create Grid, Cartesian. And then ask, this asks you for basically to input the number of grids in three directions. Now we have four grid blocks in our problem. However, uh, we have this constant pressure boundary condition on the left. <coughs> and this is actually something that CMG doesn't necessarily allow for. So we're going to we're going to develop a way to trick it. And, and the way we're going to do it is we're going to have actually a fifth sort of fake, very small fake grid block <coughs> on the left side over there. And so what we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to choose five grid blocks in the I direction, uh, then one grid block in the J direction, one block, grid block in the K direction, effectively giving us a one-dimensional problem. Then it allows us to put in our block widths. Um, our reservoir is 10,000 feet long, and we have, for this problem, we're going to use four um, equally divided uh, grid blocks there. So they're going to be 2,500 feet apiece. So for our first grid block, we're going to just put one, right? So it's going to be very small one-foot grid block. And then we're going to have 4 times 2,500. So this is shorthand for basically saying one grid block followed by four grid blocks. I'm sorry, one grid block that's one foot followed by four grid blocks that are four feet. That, sorry, four grid blocks that are 2,500 feet. So then for the J direction, we can actually put in any value that we want here uh, because it's effectively a one-dimensional simulation. However, we do want our cross-sectional area to eventually be uh, 200,000 feet squared over here. So whatever number we put here, for example, you could put one, and then later when we input the depth, you'd have to put 200,000. But to sort of keep everything square, I'm going to go ahead and en enter um, 2,500 feet here right. uh, also. And then we'll hit OK. And there's our grid blocks, and you can see they're numbered. Uh, 511, 411, 311, 211. And then if I move the cursor right over here, there's a very small grid block that is somewhere. Uh, well, it's not appearing that it's letting me pick it up, but it, but it is definitely there, and, and we'll see it later. Okay. So uh, now over here under Reservoir, we want to click on Array Properties. Uh, double click on that guy, it'll bring up this prompt, and we have to set some values here. So grid top, this is just an arbitrary number that you know, basically indicates the depth below the surface where 
uh, the reservoir starts, so we could put in 1,000 there. Uh, the grid thickness, now this is where we have to be careful. We want to put 80 in this case because 80 times 2,500 gives me 200,000 so that the cross-sectional uh, area is correct. The porosity, we'll use uh, 0 0.2. Uh, the permeability, uh, we'll move this over a little bit. The permeability in the x direction, we'll put as 50. And the permeability in the j direction, we're going to right click in this box and, and type uh, choose equals s equals i. So this basically just says that the, the uh, j direction is going to equal the i direction. And we'll do the same thing for the k direction. We'll choose equals i. Um, so um, I'm going to use this um, go-to box up here to find implicit. Um, so we're going to look for the word implicit, implicit flag. So for that guy, for implicit flag, we're going to set that to 1. Uh, then I'm going to, I need to look for oil saturation. This is going to be a single phase flow problem. So the oil saturation is going to be zero. Um, I need to look for PVT type. PVT type. That we're going to set that to one. And pressure. This is the initial pressure. The initial pressure for the whole grid is going to be 1,000. And finally, then water saturation. So we'll find water saturation. Again, this is a single phase flow problem. So the water saturation is always going to be 1. The oil saturation will be 0, and the water saturation will be 1. So from here, we're going to check OK. And OK. And you should see a, a yellow warning sign next to the rock compressibility. Uh, we want to use a negligible rock compressibility, but we have to put something in uh, so to make the error go away. So we're going to say something very small, like e to the minus 20 there. Okay. So <coughs> um, there we have that step complete. You'll see that the rock compressibility warning sign is gone. Again, you won't be able to run it in, unless there's any uh, red X's or warning signs over here, or you, you may not be able to run it if there are warning signs. So now we want to go to components. Um, we want to uh, find the model here. Uh, double click on model, and then type, uh, click none of these, uh, launch a detailed dialog. That'll bring up this guy. And then what we want to do is we want to set this to a black oil model. And it's going to be a black oil model, but we're going to, by setting the oil saturations to zero, then we're, we'll effectively have a single phase flow model. <coughs> and then we have to click on this PVT regions and then general. And even though a lot of these won't be used, we, we need to go ahead and input them or CMG in order for CMG to run. So we'll set the reservoir temperature to 241. The oil density, we'll go ahead and set. The gas density. Water phase density. The undersaturated CO. And E to the minus sixth. Then some things that do matter, I guess. The so formation volume factor is one for water. The water compressibility, of course, does matter. One e to the minus sixth. 
the reference pressure for the formation volume factor will set to the initial reservoir pressure, 1,000 psi. Uh, the viscosity of water is one centipoise, and the pressure dependence of viscosity is going to be none, zero. So we'll go ahead and click apply, uh, and then OK. Then return to the PVT regions under PVT table. Under tools here, we want to generate PVT table using correlations. So we'll go ahead and click OK there. And we want to generate uh, data up to a max pressure of 2,000 PSI. Set the bubble point calculation to 1,000 PSI. Set the gas density to 0 0.1. And change this to, rather, uh, gas gravity. Right there. And we'll click OK a couple of times. We're going to uh, uncheck the box that says include oil compressibility in the PVT table. And then we'll click apply and OK. So now you notice that both reservoir and components have green check marks, so we'll move on to rock fluid properties. Um, you know, this is a single phase problem, so relative permeability and capillary pressure don't affect the solution, but CMG still requires those as inputs, so we'll have to do some things here. Um, we're going to click rock fluid, click the rock fluid um, red check box here. Oh, I'm sorry, I, f I forgot to hit OK there. Uh, click rock fluid, click rock fluid types, double click on it. Um, going to go up here to new rock type. We're going to make sure that include capillary pressure is unchecked. And then we'll go tools generate table using correlations. These are the tables for the relative permeabilities and of course since uh, this is just single phase flow all the um, oil endpoints endpoints will be endpoints will be zero and all of the water will be one. So the first eight boxes are zeros, followed by the next eight boxes are ones. Hit apply. And OK. And uh, OK. Now the rock fluid should have uh, a green check box there. So we'll go ahead and click on initial conditions. Double click there. Go over here to the advanced tab. And what we want to do here is select the user specified pressure and saturations for each grid block. So we already input that the oil saturation was zero and the water saturation was one everywhere as well as the initial pressure of 1,000. So we want to go ahead and hit, hit uh, OK there. Then uh, we need to go to numerical properties. There's a green check mark there. However, CMG um, had already sort of pre-selected certain time steps, at, and we want to uh, modify these a little bit so we can have a little more control over our simulation. So what we'll want to first do is uh, change some of these values, the DT well value we want to change to one day, and then we're going to set the maximum time step value to something a little bit more than one, and the minimum time step value to something approximately a little bit less than one. And that basically forces the time step to be fall on the one day increments. Uh, the last thing we want to do is go down to uh, where it says adaptive implicit method, and we want to uh, select this to be off. Okay.
and we hit apply and OK. So we're almost there. We need to handle this fake grid block over here. We're, uh, and again, CMG doesn't have the ability to um, truly have a, a, a prescribed pressure boundary condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a well in that grid block. And again, it's a very time, it's a very a small uh, grid block. So we're going to put a constant bottom hole pressure well in that in that uh, grid block to enforce that the uh, the the time step, the uh, effectively giving it a, a constant pressure on this, on this side over here. So we, we're going to go to wells, and we'll go to a new well. And the type of well we want is an injector mob weight well. And we have to go over here and click constraints. Uh, Check the box that says constraint definition. We want to operate this well at a bottom hole, uh, bottom hole pressure uh, of max value 2,000 psi. Right? So that's our that corresponds to our boundary condition on the left hand side of our problem, a 2,000 psi there. Okay. If we go back over here to wells and click the plus and then the plus again, there'll be uh, this 1901 perf. If we double click on it, oh, I'm sorry, cancel that. Oh, yes, sorry. So. We want to click on this guy, choose Perforations tab, choose Insert Before Selected Node, and choose User Block Address. And this is 111 to indicate the first grid block. And then we can choose OK. And then we'll click on Dates here. And <coughs> we'll set the dates. So we're going to go over here to Add a Range of Dates. And we'll actually have it run uh, in steps of one day, and we'll have it run for three days. Right. So three days in steps of one day. And if we hit OK, and we have those there. And if we then we can hit close. And so now we'll we'll write file save as. And we'll just call this. Uh, you can change the name of it. Uh, so we'll call this, we'll call this test problem. And what we're going to do now is after we've have it saved there, we'll, we'll go ahead and close out of builder. It's going to ask you this: Do you want to save again? So we closed out a builder, and then we're back to the launcher screen, and you should you should see uh, your test problem dot dat. And what we want to do here is we want to open this in a text editor. So I can use uh, say Notepad plus plus. And what we want to do is change the permeability in that first grid block. So the the permeability in that first grid block we want to make it very high, so that effectively the fluid can flow freely through there, and the pressure will remain nearly constant in that grid block. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to change this line that says permeability con for constant to um, permeability. And then we'll use our kind of shorthand notation. We'll start with a, some very high value, say 80,000, and then 4 times 50. So basically, we're saying that there's in the first grid block, there's 80,000 millidarcy permeability, followed by uh, followed by four grid blocks that have 50 psi permeability, and then once we have that, we can then save our file and go ahead and close out of there. And then we can take our test problem dot dat and drag it back into Builder. It'll relaunch our 
application, and now we're basically ready to run. So what we can do is say validate with IMAX. It's going to ask us if we want to save. And then we're going to choose run normal immediately, and we'll choose run. And there we've, r we've run without any errors. So we can close this window. Uh, we can go back over here. And now you'll see there's multiple files, testproblem.irf and mrf and these other things. If you take this testproblem.rf and you drag it into results 3D, then we can look at the results. M namely, what we're interested in here is the pressure. Okay, Over the three-day region, we can see it changed. And if we go in here and look now, 1582 in the first grid block, 1184 in the second grid block, 1051.5 in the next grid block, and 1015.9 in the last grid block. So that's just a quick tutorial on how to run CMG for a very simple four-grid block problem.